Good? Rolling? Did we say we're rolling? Rolling. Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Biederman from B&H Photo and National Parks at Night. And I'm here today to give you five tips on how to photograph the upcoming total solar eclipse. So as many of you know, April 8th is going to be insane. For the first time in a long time, we're having a total solar eclipse encapsulate most of North America. It's starting from Mexico, coming up through Texas, Arkansas, through the Midwest, and gonna end up past Maine, up to uh, Nova Scotia. So many people, millions upon millions of people are gonna are live in the path of totality, and there are gonna be millions more that are gonna be visiting it. So how can you capture it? Tip number one. Get familiar with your Eclipse gear and practice now. So most of you should have a camera and a lens, a sturdy tripod, that solar filter. If you haven't got that solar filter, you better click on some links below and order those solar filters and start practicing shooting the sun right now. This is the trick. This is gonna be the thing that we are not familiar with. Yes, we might take pictures that have the sun a little bit in it, but we are going to be tracking the transit of the sun, okay? We're gonna to wanna to have a telephoto lens, and perhaps we're gonna to wanna to use a gimbal head, or a geared head, or perhaps a actual tracker to follow that transit of the sun. So those are the three things you might not have, are that gimbal, the tracker, or that geared head that might make your tracking a little bit easier. But anyways, we want to practice shooting it, get used to following it across the sky, and practice it during the times that the eclipse will happen in your region. For most of us, that's gonna be somewhere between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. in America. So go out there now, put those solar filters on, and start getting used to shooting the sun. Tip number two, use a high megapixel camera and a telephoto lens. When we put these combinations together, we're gonna get a very close look at the eclipse, especially during the four minutes you might experience the corona when it's so beautiful and something that you'll never see or have seen before. Right? So when I say high megapixel camera, what am I talking about? Well, something over 30 megapixels, 40 megapixels, 50 megapixels, 60 megapixels, 100 megapixels, even better, right? That'll allow us to just get really amazing dynamic range and crop into the scene if we don't maybe have as telephoto of a lens as we want. Now, when we talk about telephoto lenses, are we talking about 800 millimeter, 1,000 millimeter? No, 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 take a step back. You don't have to get that crazy. Hopefully it can be something that you have already. For me, the perfect focal length is 400 millimeter. So I could use something like a 100 to 400 millimeter uh, lens. I could use a 150 to 500 millimeter lens. Something that kind of gets past 300, but anything past 500, I think we're gonna just be getting a little too close. Now you might ask, wait, what? What? I wanna be as close as I can to the eclipse. Yes, that's true, but during totality, dur the corona kind of spikes outside of the sun. And basically, if you're cropped in too close, you'll miss half of the show. So for me, the two times that I've shot it, I've shot it at 430 and 400 millimeters. 370 to 470 actually millimeters is what I've shot it at. And I've been very happy. It's given me room to crop in, as well as I'm not cropping any of that beautiful Corona. Yes, you can use a teleconverter. Now be warned, obviously, when we put additional glass in front of the glass we've got, there could be, you might lose a little bit of image quality with that, so I recommend 1.4 teleconverters over 2.0 teleconverters. Um, but yes, if you got a teleconverter and if it fits on that lens, remember, teleconverters don't fit on every lens or don't work on every lens. Tip number three, focus and monitor your exposure. So focus, you might be like, ah, 
I know how to focus on the sun. That's pretty easy. Yes, it might be, but are the sunspots in focus? Aha, see, you, have you ever shot the sunspots before? I don't think so. When you put on a really good solar filter, that allows us to actually see the detail in the sun. And one of the best details to photograph in the sun any time of the year are the sunspots, okay? I remember I was struggling during the annular eclipse with the cardboard filters, right? They're good, they're fun, uh, they have a nice warm uh, quality to them, but they don't resolve as much detail as glass ones or the actual solar filter ones. So if you're using a glass uh, filter or one of the solar, the actual solar filter filters, um, that is gonna give you the best resolving uh, power and you'll be really able to get a nice close look at those sunspots. When you're focusing on the sun, focus on the edge if, you, if you're struggling with it. And then typically, I will also then, once I have achieved focus, I will switch it to manual focus. I'll switch it from autofocus to achieve the focus. Once I've got it, I'll switch it to manual focus. And that way I can just continue tracking when I take the filter off. I won't need to make any adjustments during totality. I won't struggle or lose time, that precious time we've got, and going in and out of focus is for some reason I lose that focus. So nail that focus, go to manual focus, and then monitor the meter. This is kind of a two part uh, here, but monitoring your meter and keeping uh, an eye on those exposures. If you're tracking the sun through its whole transit to the eclipse, the exposure is not going to change much until we lose about half of the sun. And then really things will start to pick up when it's in the crescent part of the eclipse to the eclipse. That's when we're really gonna have to really start adjusting our exposures anywhere from 10 to 15 stops bracket as well to make sure that you are getting everything in because it's gonna be a high contrast scene. You wanna be able to pull in as again, much dynamic range as you can. So nail that focus, you know, and really look at those, uh, look at that histogram, check your exposure and uh, bracket as much as possible, especially through totality. Step number four, shoot wide and get, take in the actual scene where you're photographing the eclipse, as well as that composite shot of all the phases of the eclipse. You know, I, I love, and I think so many of us love that really close look at the eclipse and totality and diamond, the diamond ring, the Bailey pearls, all that stuff is wonderful. But all of them start to look the same because they're just in a dark sky. And where did you? photograph the eclipse. That's an important part of the story. Okay, so before the eclipse happens, take a picture of the foreground of where you are, hopefully include some interesting foreground, something really close to the, not just distant mountains or distant trees, get something interesting close up if you can, and then stick around for the show. It usually is gonna be four to five hours, so maybe, let's see, pull up a stool and, uh, you know, take a photograph, and what I anticipate is you take a photograph every four to five minutes. The Earth is rotating quite quickly, right? And the sun will have been in a unoverlapping position every four to five, every four to five minutes. Test it out, going back to phase one, and test that out how, many, how much time, because how much time depends upon your focal length, right, and your latitude. All right, so, but if you set it up to then just take a picture every, let's say, five minutes, you can set up your intervalometer, let it do its thing, make sure you're, and, and it'll take a picture every five minutes, and you'll get every, that whole transit of the sun, and then when it starts to get a little, a little cookie bite out of it into all the little phases, including eclipse. Now, of course, don't forget, to take off your solar filter during the eclipse as well for the wide angle as, as well as the telephoto shot too. But don't forget to shoot wide and take in the whole scene. Tip number five, and this is, this is the most important tip. So I saved it for the last. And that is to step away 
from your camera. Step away from thinking about getting the shot, especially during totality, and really enjoy the show. Do you want a memory of your LCD screen? Or do you want a memory of the entire scene? You know, we love taking pictures. We love capturing the moments, but we also have to remember to live in the moment. And a total solar eclipse is, it's a moment unlike any other moment you can experience. And we all need to experience that. Want to learn more about photographing and enjoying the upcoming total solar eclipse? Well, follow the link below. b &H is partnering with Atlas Obscura and we're throwing a huge party. It's actually a festival. It's the Ecliptic Festival and it's happening in Hot Springs, Arkansas from April 5th to the 8th. There'll be music and bands and concerts and b &H will have telescopes and lenses all set up for you to photograph the eclipse, enjoy the sun, and do a little bit of night photography as well. So you want to check that out. Also, uh, National Parks at Night is producing an ebook on photographing the eclipse. Uh, follow that link below and that'll give you even more information about the history, how to photograph it, our experiences, etc. So we hope to see you out there seizing the eclipse. Bethable, a a bethable? <laughs> Let me get this off of me. You better send me the I want the blooper reel, not this one. <laughs>